damage to homes, businesses, and vehicles is likely, and complete destruction possible. I literally thought I was gonna die. At 11.03 a.m., a confirmed large and extremely dangerous tornado was located near Washington. The refrigerator came through, it hit me in the head, hit me on the left side of my head, and it kind of threw me back into the couch in the fireplace room. And I tried to get up again, and then wood started hitting me. A large, extremely dangerous and potentially deadly tornado is on the ground. The tornado was coming. It was way closer than I wanted it to be. I got to the end of the garage and I heard a noise that said, nah, you really don't need these pictures. You are in a life-threatening situation. To protect your life, take cover now. They always say, sounds like a train. And I heard a train. This thing has gotten huge, Chief. Big debris field. I can tell you when I saw that come in on the radar, I felt like my heart just sank. I actually was trying to get a hold of Five Points to say uh, we'll probably need body bags delivered delivered there to put up a maybe temporary morgue. Uh, and that was just the first mindset. Street signs are gone. Uh, the yellow house or blue house that was on the corner was no longer there. Uh, didn't really know where I was in my own community. We're going to need a technical rescue team. We've got heavy damage and a lot of buildings down. One particular damaged home, seeing pictures on the wall and realizing that, uh, that I know that family, um, that's tough. Some of our officers lost everything, and they came to work to help. Pieces of paper, baby clothing, pictures. They were literally going through the mud and debris in the field trying to pick up small pieces for their neighbors to see if they could somehow bring some sort of comfort to the people that have lost everything. Good evening. A year and a half ago, doctors told this Peoria woman she only had months to live. Today, Susie Sturm has a second chance at life, and, well, she's diving into it with a purpose. I should have been in a coma. It all started just over three years ago. Doctors knew something was wrong. Then it got worse. You need to go home and get on a liver transplant list. You are in liver failure. Wow. Lucky for her, she got a liver quickly, and she's not taking it for granted. I want to raise awareness for organ and tissue donation. It saved my life. But it's the way she's raising awareness that's unique. Olympics for transplant patients. I'm a pretty competitive person. Always loved to swim, but never swam competitively. So I told my daughters, I said, see this? I'm going to do this. And my daughters were like, Okay, Mom. So she found a coach. Now, one thing I would suggest... But who says her passion has rippling effects. Well, to be perfectly honest, I went and uh, I uh, became an organ donor after I met her. Making a difference one swim at a time. Of course, Susie wants to give back to donors like the 25-year-old man who saved her life and seven others. I want to celebrate those who gave the ultimate gift. And I want to honor my donor who gave me the gift of a lifetime. Again, Susie is practicing to compete in the Transplant Games of America. That's this coming August in Salt Lake City. So she's always dreamed of competing in Olympic sports. Well, now that dream is kind of a reality. It's all a bonus of her second chance at life. I'm Jesse Gwynn. Back to you. We all know agriculture plays a big part in the local economy, and that's why some farmers are working together to get the harvest done. John Weishaupt and Jake Lay own farmland in Tazewell County that's been in their families for decades. So they know a thing or two about farming. And in the harvest season, you'll find them harvesting each other's fields. Spread the cost of the machine so it would help the financial part of it a little bit better. Together, the two own nearly 3,000 acres. But since farming is a costly business, the two decided several years back to use one combine to harvest their fields saving hundreds of thousands of dollars. They say it's played out well, especially since farming is a business of unknowns. 
Take this year, for example. We went in planting bone dry and then all the rain and we had water standing in low ground and uh, this harvest has just come up a whole lot better than we ever thought it would. Where the price of grain is right now, it, it's, it's pretty well tied with last year's income, but I would like to see the prices get a little bit better. Although the grain is dry and the harvest is good, the two say things could still be better. That's because grain prices are somewhat low. There's not quite as big of a demand for it. Um, I hope that changes in the future. We're going to have to get some, some short years in here to get this supply back down. Get it, get it back down to where they need our grain a little more. In fact, Lay says it's more beneficial to actually get more money for less grain because of wear and tear on equipment. And of course, the higher a farmer's income, the more he puts back into the local economy. And that's good news for you. If the farmer's got money, he'll spend it. If he don't have money, he'll set back and get by with what he's got. So farmers working together isn't necessarily just a benefit for them. In the long run, it's a benefit for you and all of us because of the central Illinois economy. I'm meteorologist Jesse Gwen in Tazewell County for 25 News. Back to you. If you take a drive down the old Route 66, you'll eventually come through the village of McLean, home to about 800 people and lots of trains. But there are trains and history you may not necessarily know about. This 165-year-old depot stands right alongside 66. Where most people go to work, I go play with trains. Tom Ludlam, a train enthusiast, started helping the village renovate the old depot just under 10 years ago. I was driving by the building one day. I don't know how many times I drove by and had not noticed that this depot was sitting here. And after the village had cleaned it up, surprised where'd that come from? Two years older than the village itself, here stands the second oldest wood depot in the state. The building was once in poor shape, having been used as an antique store and the center of a junkyard. They thought I was an absolute fruitcake. Ironically, he suggested the village make the building a hobby shop. It's my project. If I fail, it's my problem. If I succeed, then that's good to go. So, well, I'm eight years later, I'm doing pretty good. Today, it's a fully functioning model railroad shop complete with all the bells and whistles. Tom is even adding a model train layout in one of the rooms. It had not been modified much at all. All the frames, the woodwork, other things like that still retain original holes. Today in McLean, you'll find two high-speed railways traveling through the community, surrounded by this safety gating. And although technology has changed, the history has not changed. For example, this is where the depot once stood. It's since been moved to a different location a few blocks from here. That was to avoid it actually being torn down. That's for good reason, because the history of the depot goes further than just its age. In 1865, President Abraham Lincoln's funeral train actually went by the depot, and there are only two stations that saw that procession still standing in Illinois. With the exception of this one and one at Lockport and all the rest of the buildings along this entire route through, uh, through Illinois from Chicago down to Springfield have all been replaced. Today, the depot also displays written history. Back in the freight room, we have uh, names and dates of travelers and employees going back to the 1880s. We got stuck with a, an old building over all these years, and of course, now we have a treasure. Allowing both train and history buffs to get their kicks on Route 66. In McLean, I'm Jesse Gwynn, 25 News.